Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and our very first edition of Race Face Spotlight. So today we're going to go out and spend some time with Hollister, California, 16-year-old Adam Lemke. Now, Adam races both in the RPM Mortgage Pro Late Model Series and the USAC Western Midget Series. Adam, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you, Ryan? I'm doing great, man. Let's start off by talking a little late model programs. I know that you run for Nate Clower. You got a badass fast number 98 uh, Toyota late model. So tell us a little bit about what's been going on in the late model series this year. The late model's been going good. We got a rough start though. We wrecked two times in a row and it set us back in the point standings, which hurt us a lot. And we're not able to compete or go for the, the title, but we're good for rookie of the year and at least the top three are a third place in points this year. And that's what we're shooting for. Well, what a lot of people may not know is that you run the junior late model series a little bit last year. If I remember correctly, you ran three races and then you stepped right into the pro late model series. So that's a big step because in that pro late model series, you get some of the best late model drivers in the country that are racing out there. So what was the big adjustment from the junior late models up to this, this pro late model series? Just the competition. The speed wasn't that big of a difference. I got used to the speed in like a test session or so, but it's just the competition. Everyone's running so close and tight and they're all running each other so hard, but clean. It's just a lot of fun. And I'd say just the competition is what's the biggest difference between the juniors and the pros. Okay, so let me ask you another question. Um, let's talk about the late model car. Again, the difference between the junior late model. I know you guys run on a different tire, I believe. I believe the tire's a little bit bigger for the pro late model series. And isn't there some carburation differences between the two cars? Yeah, and they're on a different chip in the car, so they can't go as fast on a straightaway. And uh, you have a different option between motors. You can run an open motor or a 602, which is this horsepower difference, but one saves higher than the other if you run it right. So it just comes down to preference, and the chip is pretty much the, the only difference between the, the juniors and the pros. The juniors can run in practice trim, in qualifying trim, there's there's really no difference in times. Like if like Jesse Love, my teammate in the in the late model, he runs juniors and he can run he can qualify top five if the car is really hooked up and qualify top five in the pros with his time that he runs. All right. So this is really just a lot getting a lot of experience, if you would, to help you move forward next year, um, probably into even some more competitive arenas. Yeah, it's, the pros at Madera are just, they're so competitive and so hard to run in. If you can run top three or top five in, the, in that class, you can go anywhere and run really good. It's just because they, that class gets you ready for harder competition or harder tracks as you go along. And I know that since, like you, you talked about a little bit, since the first two races that um, I know one of them I, actually, both of them, you kind of got taken out. I actually watched the, the second race. I think it was last night. It was uh, actually on MAV TV. And I watched that one. And man, that was just a wrong place at the wrong time type of deal. Um, I don't know if the spotter didn't clear you or whatever. But man, you had a great run going on there. I mean, uh, I'm looking at that race as it starts to unfold. And I'm thinking, man, this is a top four, maybe a top two finish. Yeah, the car was really hooked up round two. We had the car really good. And uh, we knew we had a shot at, at least top three. I don't know if we had a winning car, but at the end I could have maybe drove the car to the front and held my position because the car was fast enough to hold it. I don't know if it was fast enough to get there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it was just lack of an experience in the car that got us in the wreck that we did. But we're running good now. I think we're on a solid top three or a, th a three streak top 10. So. I think we're pretty good and we have a win coming. Yeah, you can see that coming week after week after week. You guys, again, are just running better. And I think a lot of that, you can just see how you kind of handle the car around. Your confidence level is really up. And again, you know, I mean, th that's a big change because what a lot, again, a lot of people may not understand is Adam has a lot of open wheel experience but not that much experience in a late model. So just those three races last year in the junior late model, I think you did run one super late model race last year 
if I remember correctly. And then now you're kind of like thrown into the ring of fire with some of the best drivers in the country. So overall, I think you're doing an amazing job. And, and I, I do believe that those top three, top four finishes are going to be consistent for the rest of the year. And if I remember correctly, that second race, you know, again, you were running the top three or four. And if I remember correctly, the, the two front runners later in the race got into each other and one of them got put up into the wall and sent to the back. So, you know, if that little situation doesn't happen, you're top two and you know what you say, you got to be in contention to win. So if you keep consistently finishing in those top fives, the win's definitely going to come. Yeah, I think so too. So let's now talk about those two good looking cars setting behind you. So we've got the orange number 98, which is the pavement car. And we got the black, what's the number on the black car? 41. 41, okay. So we got the black 41 car, that's the dirt car. Um, before we get into details, which is your favorite to drive? I don't know. I like asphalt racing a lot, but it's always fun to go out and run the dirt car over here and now, like now and then. Just cause the dirt's, dirt's growing on me. I never ran dirt a lot in my career, but it's, it's getting more fun as I go in the dirt car. So let's talk about the dirt car then for a little bit. This weekend, you're going to be at Kern County Speedway back in the dirt. I think for only the second time, I think you guys have had some races that have been rained out and different things like that. So are you looking forward to getting back in that car this weekend? Yeah, the two races that got rained out were, I think, Merced and Chachilla. And those two tracks are, are pretty fun. We always ran good there before. But I got my first win in this series in the dirt car at Kern and Kerns are a really cool place for me to run at and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to, to uh, seeing what happens this weekend. So now let's shift over to the, I'm just going to call it the orange beast because that's what it's been all year. I mean, you want to talk about dominance. Um, you've ran six races. You've set on the pole, I believe, four times out of the six. You've won six heat races and you've won all six A main features. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. That is a dominant performance. Yeah, the car, the 98 is really good. That that car, I can put it anywhere that it'll stick. And just, Randy gets that car so good. It's not even like it's, you can't compete with it, against it. It's just really fast. The car responds to everything that we do to it. And when I get out there and I get, and I set sail in that car, it's just no one's touching it. Yeah, and I know you, you talked a little bit about Randy there. That's Randy Chastain. He's the guy who takes care of that thing. And tell us a little bit. I know you and Randy have a very, very special relationship, much more than just a driver and a crew chief. Yeah, I think when it comes down to a, a crew chief and a driver's relationship, it should be more than just when you get to the racetrack, like here I am, I'm your driver. I think it should be more like off the track to you. I think the relationship is strong, is better if you guys know each other off the track and on the track. And Randy and I act like we're like five years old with kids. We just hang out and have a lot of fun. But when it comes down to business, we're, we're there and he understands what I'm telling him and he understands what I need the car to do, what he needs to get to the lane. Yeah, because again, that, that, that car has been so hooked up, especially at Madero, the races that I've watched. I mean, you guys have basically just ran off I didn't, doesn't matter. I've, I've known just, you, you've, I don't know if you were kind of bored in there and thought, oh, I'm going to run a high line, a low line. Um, you're two, three seconds ahead of everybody, but it has been a dominant performance. Uh, you're leading the USAC Western Midget Points Championship for the overall, definitely in the, in the pavement series. And then I think you're number two in the dirt series with this dirt race coming back up. So, um, Triple Crown Championship in your in your sights this year? It definitely is. That's what we're going for, and we hope to end up with it. All right. Well, that would be awful. Okay. So let's talk about one of your new sponsors, and that's Off Axis Paint. Um, you kind of brought them on at the beginning of the season, and they do amazing jobs when it comes to painting helmets and stuff like that. And I know you've got one you want to share with us a little bit. So let's show the viewers the awesome helmet that these guys put together for you. I think this is the second or third helmet that Greg has done for me. And it's it's an awesome helmet. Like Greg hooks me up all the time and he does all my suits and my helmets. And 
he just wants me to stand out from everyone else and look the best in the pits. And at the end of the day, that's, it comes down to just like driving and putting yourself out there and looking good. And Greg understands that and he does a great job. So what are you gonna do this weekend to protect that helmet from all those dirt clods at Kern County? I don't know, I think I'm gonna run my back of the helmet. I don't wanna get that thing messed up, man. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to go there with that. I was thinking like, you know, like some helmet bonnet over the top of it or something to be able to protect that. So, uh, but off-axis paint has been a good addition to you, to your cars and everything. And, and I know that uh, they're helping you a little bit more than just uh, providing pa paint for your helmet and stuff. Yeah, that, I mean, Greg, it's like having a like, relationship with Randy. Like, Greg and I get along really well and we both understand each other. And he's still a young guy. And he's, we just like we met at Sonoma and we just hung out the entire time and it was a lot of fun. All right, so we're competing in the in the RPM Pro Mortgage Late Model, going for Rookie of the Year, um, again dominating in the USAC Western Midget Series. So let's talk just a little bit about what the rest of 2018 has in store for Adam. Anything special on the horizon? Um, I don't think so. I think we're just going to finish out this. Pro late model deal and uh, the midgets, and then we're going to slowly transition to what we're going to do next year. And uh, it should be a lot of fun, and we're going to do a whole lot of stuff in 2019. Okay, so any any insights to what's going on in 2019? Or are you kind of keeping that under the lid? Um, we're going to move on to some bigger pro or bigger late models, and then we're going to we're going to stick our head into the VCR midgets, and then move on into there, and just move up into bigger midgets and bigger cars. All right. So any other of your sponsors that you want to get a shout out to before we wrap up the, the, the show? Uh, GoPro, Lucas Oil, and Spy Optic are the main three. Uh, they do a lot for me. And then Off Axis. We're doing everything that they can do for me and just putting me out there. All right. So one other thing I do want to talk about, I want to talk about something that you did last weekend at Madera Speedway, and that was with the Dream, the Dream Team Network. So share a little bit of what that program is about and what it was like to have um, one of those special need people actually be a part of your uh, team. And I know we talked a little bit earlier that they got to wave the green flag and then ultimately they ended up in victory circle. So I don't know how much better the experience could have been, but just tell us what that means to you. It was really cool to show or to like bring someone out that is familiar with racing and that has special needs to show them around the racetrack and tell them what we do and just build a relationship with them was the biggest thing. That's why they came down here. Just build a relationship with them and show them like what we do in the pit and how, how fun it can be. And it was just a lot of fun to show them around and things like that. Well, there you got it, ladies and gentlemen. 16-year-old Adam Lemke, Hollister, California, one of the up-and-coming best young race car drivers in the country. We're very proud to have him under the Race Face banner. We're really excited about that. We know that you're working with Lauren Rainier at Rainier Racing Development a little. And man, the, the, the future looks bright for you. Uh, I wanna encourage everybody to go online and check out adamlemkeracing.com. And then just go out there again, adamlemkeracing.com on Facebook, like his Facebook page. Adam, is there anything you wanna say when we wrap up? I just want to thank everyone for watching us and, and all my sponsors. Okay, and keep in mind, everybody, you can catch these uh, pro late model races on MAV TV. So just kind of check your, um, you know, your, your schedule and be well assured that these things are running about six weeks after the race is there. But they're still exciting. It's a great, it's racing, man. It's a great thing to be able to do. So Adam, again, thanks for being with us. And we'll look forward to having you back on the show later this year. All right, everybody, that's it for our first edition of Race Face Spotlight. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Race Face Spotlight will be coming to you every other week at nine o'clock Eastern time. And you can check that out either on Facebook, our YouTube channel, or you can go directly to raceface.com. TV. Glad you had some time to spend with us and we'll see you back here in two weeks.